Hi there, my name is Jimmy Bonero with Notable Solutions and in this video what we're going to do is take a document that is eight pages long that has cover pages mixed inside of the batch. Each of these cover pages has the word cover page for scanning only and then a sample file behind that so the idea is that whenever we find one of these cover pages what we want to do is we want to separate the job uh, into individual documents. Okay. So let me move that out of the way. On our website, videos.smartmfp.net, there's already a great video on how to do a conditional split of a job based on a zone OCR. The example that was built here is it looks for an invoice number seven digits long that starts with the number 98. When it finds the next page and it finds the same number, uh, inside or the same pattern inside of that page it looks at the number and, and it looks to see if it's different than the first one if it's the same it moves on to the next one and it does a check here and if it's different it will then apply the split in our example what we're doing is we're just looking for any text when you find this text I want you to split the job and um, I recommend that if you're not aware of this video if you haven't gone through it I recommend that you definitely go through it um, to get a really good understanding of how the script is uh, is working. Um, also available here is um, the sample config and script all zipped up in a package. I've already downloaded this, went in and downloaded it to my desktop and I've actually extracted it to a folder on my C drive called AutoStore and inside of here I've placed that folder right here. The other thing I've done is I've uh, opened it in the process designer and I've started the service. Now, here's our config, and here's our script, and then there's a sample file that's seven pages long. And what it's doing is it's looking up in the upper corner at the invoice number that's located here, and in the seven pages, I've got uh, an invoice number ending in 47. When I go to the next page, it also ends in 47. When I go to the next page, it changes to 48. So here's where I would want the split to occur. I'll go to the next page and it's the same, still 48, still 48 on the next page, and then the next page is 49. Here again I would want to apply the split and with page 6 of 7 go into 7 of 7, I should end up with three uh, documents. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this over. We'll open up the status monitor. As you can see it's already picked up the file and it's starting to process it as we speak. I'll come into the output folder where it should go and I should end up with three files. Okay, so there we are. This first one should be two pages, the next one should be three pages, and the next one should be two pages. All separated based on this uh, invoice number, which that one ends in 4.7 and page two also ends in 4.7. I'll just go through one more. This one ends in 4.8, that's our three page document, ends in 4.8 and the third page also in the 48. So with that out of the way, that's essentially how it works. Now we want this sample file that we have in our scenario to more or less work the same way. In this case we want to find the word cover page for scanning only and based on the fact that you that we find that we want to do the split. So I'm going to take our configuration file and use that as, low, as well as the script as a baseline uh, for doing this. So when I open up Auto Capture, I'll find the form split. I'm going to copy and paste. And here I'm just going to say split same text. When I find the same text, I want to do the split. Now the components that are in here um, for the Abbey, what it's doing is it's identifying the text that is, that is inside of the zone and we'll need to make a change here. The next thing is our VB script component which has a script that is performing the evaluation of the text that's inside, inside of Abbey and then our professional image management component is what is actually handling the, the split. So I'm going to actually open this one up first and show you that in the split tab 
we say split on pages these are the pages that it's actually going to do the split and you'll notice that this is an RRT this RRT comes from the script and what I'm going to do is say for example I want to split on page 1 5 and 8 I would type in 1 comma 5 comma 8 but when we pass the split sequence in from the script that script will determine what exactly that needs to be based on the text that it found during its evaluation so I'm gonna cancel here because we're gonna leave this alone we don't need to make any changes to our um, pro image management component I'm gonna start next with the Abbey component here it's activated and we're gonna pass the document through and here we're also saying we're gonna zone in on the page when I come in here um, the sample invoice is already listed here and you'll see that in zone number one we have a box around this area here looking for that number what it's doing uh, as it's evaluating the text inside the zone is in a seven page document it's going to recognize the zone on all of the pages so as I go through the next page it's still looking in that zone and then the third page same thing so I'll go back to my first page and that is how it's identifying the text inside of the page now what's also happening is that whatever it finds inside of the zone is being exported to a CSV file the CSV file is going to get passed onto the script to be evaluated in order to be able to determine you know what text is inside of that zone what I want to do is I want to open up our sample that we're working with and when I do that you'll notice that this zone is not going to capture all of the text that's inside of here so I'm just going to readjust the zone and if there was any float inside of the page I might want to make this a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller to make sure that we're capturing uh, all of it but we're looking for um, whatever's inside of this box so for now I'll just leave this just the way it is and again we're going to leave export zones to CSV file the way it is as well alright that's it for Abby now we'll go to the script this will be the last stop when we come into the script I'm not taking any fields and bringing them in but I do have um, the name split which corresponds to the onload event that's inside of the script this is the path of the script and when I click on that split on load is basically why it's the name is split so when I say split underscore on load split would be the name that I'm going to or the name of the subroutine that I'm going to call so the onload event is the sub that I'm actually going to be calling so let's look at the script real quick and uh, basically what's happening during the onload event which is this entire sequence right here when I'm loading I'm saying uh, to the status monitor go ahead and write out a message uh, split on load so I know I'm in the onload event whenever anything anything is being written uh, and then the next thing I'm also going to do is I'm going to write out to the status monitor what the document count is that is coming into the script so if I've got the document coming in and then the CSV file is also coming in from Abby I should end up with two documents and here I'm reporting basically what the value is of the document count which coming in um, to AutoStore I again I should have two so in the case where I have more than one document I want to basically iterate through each one of those so I say for I equals zero to knowledge object whatever the document count was right here so in the case of two it would be I equals zero to two and in the for and next basically I'm looping through each of those documents I'm looping them or I'm looping through them because what I want to do is in the case that you find the file extension which is being determined right here of the file and the file is going to be wherever the file is inside of the auto store process that if the file extension is a CSV file then this is what needs to happen so in the case of an image file that's coming in it's just gonna skip right over this and go next but when it comes through and it is a CSV file the next thing I want you to do is say okay I found a CSV file now that I found it 
I want to say that the value of split of split sequence equals the value of this function return called get split sequence. And inside of this function, I'm passing two arguments. The first argument is basically going to be a regular expression pattern that has to do with our invoice number. In this case here, it's a number that starts with 98, and then it's any number repeated five times. Then I'm going to take the file path, and the file path is the file path of the CSV file. So for get split sequence to be able to work with the CSV file, we have to know where in the auto store process it is, and that's where file path comes in. And file path was assigned by the k.document.filePath value. Now, this works great if we're reading invoices that have a seven digit number that starts with 98. That won't work in our case. However, when we do find that split sequence, we're gonna say that the split sequence equals the split sequence and this will get written out to the status monitor. At that point I'm going to then take um, my topic.replace method and I'm going to say that the value of this RRT that I'm creating right here will be split sequence. This is how I'm determining that 1 comma 5 comma 8 or whatever that uh, whatever those page numbers are that it found the document or wherever it found the sequence that it need to be that needs to split the document up. So coming back, this is where we should um, take a look at next, and that's the split sequence equals get split sequence. What I'm going to do is scroll down just a little bit more so we can see that this function is right here. And because this function is written so that way it takes two arguments one is the regular expression profile and the other is the name of the file then we need to be able to pass those arguments in the same exact way so what I want to do is I want to use the function as it is for the most part except just change what we need to change in order to to get what we need done um, so as I look through this function the next thing is that I find that split sequence is um, dimensionalized and it's set to nothing. The next thing is that an array of lines is going to be created and that array of lines is going to equal the return of this function called auto store library underscore retext file underscore unicode with a file name argument passed into that. This function is located right down here. So what this function basically does is it reads the file, it takes each line from it, and it builds an array this function is going to remain intact as it is. I don't want to make any changes to that. I like the way it works. It's good. Now I come to um, my array and I'm saying build an array based on what you find in this function here. Then I create a regular expression object uh, and then I then create a variable called page counter which I set to equal negative one. And if you have any questions on this, refer back to the split on conditional CR video. Um, this next line here is last invoice number. So I'm not dealing with an invoice. So I probably am not really concerned with what the last invoice number is. Um, so let me just make a note of this right here that that is something I want to take a look at. And the next thing is I want to say for each line an array of lines, which is that array that I got right here for each line the page counter equals the page counter plus one then I want to go ahead and execute a regular expression check to find a match in the line if the matches count is greater than zero here when we loop through each line in here if I have a match and that match is more than zero then the next thing that happens if the matches is not equal to the last invoice number again we're not dealing with an invoice number so I have to take this and determine do I really need that but if I come to this next if statement actually right in between the if then I should just take a look at all of this if the length of split sequence is greater than zero 
then the split sequence is going to equal the, the split sequence in a comma. In other words, write a comma to that. So if that's not the case, then split, equal, split sequence just equals split sequence and then whatever the page counter is. So what's happening here is it's determining, is there anything inside of split sequence? Is there any length to it? Has a value been assigned to split sequence yet? If it has not, then this would happen. Meaning go ahead and just take the page number and go ahead and add it to the split sequence variable. Once something does get added to it, the next thing, the next thing that's going to happen is it's going to start hitting this if statement every single time and start adding a comma. The idea is going to be to return a split sequence that looks something similar to 1, 3, 5, for example. So finally, split sequence, which is the name of my function, will be assigned the value get split sequence equals split sequence. All right. Now, because I like this function, I'm going to take a copy of that. I'm going to paste it right here. Now, before I move up, let me let me stay on here and say get split sequence, the difference being with the first example of the batch that had the invoice numbers and what I'm looking for is regular text. I'm going to rename my copy of it to get split sequence same text. And if I scroll down a little bit more, get split sequence same text will equal the split sequence. So coming back up to my onload event where I'm saying split sequence equals get split sequence. I'm going to come to the beginning of that line, comment it out, and we're going to say get split sequence same text. Now, I'm going to get rid of that because we're not looking for an invoice number. We're looking for So with that there, I'm basically taking the name function that's been copied with a different name, and I'm saying I want to find that regular expression. So coming back down to the function that we just copied right here, if a match and an invoice number is the same, I don't need to worry about that. So I'm going to comment this part of the if then. However, I do want to build the split sequence, which is nested inside of here. So that's going to stay there. In the case of last invoice number, I don't need that. And I don't need that. So there's enough of a difference in here where it's a good idea to have a different function with just a slightly different name. Um, more or less doing the same thing. Um, but not worrying about the last invoice number was the only real change that we had to make to this. And with that, I'm just going to compile and make sure that there's no errors. And what I can do is save this. Save this and restart. All right. Now, Let's see if we did a good job. Split same text. All right, there we go. So I've got four documents because I have four cover pages. And when I open this one up, each one of these should be a two-page document. So there's my cover page. It found that. Actually, look, look at the status monitor real quick again. Stop that. Okay. So here it found a TIFF file. Then it found a CSV file. When it, said, when it found one, it said, yep, I found you. And then de determined what that split sequence needed to be. 
done splitting, pass it over to Pro Image Management, and send a folder, took one, two, three, four files, and sent them over individually. All right, so here we go, page one of two, and there's the sample file for that. Next one, two pages. Next one is two pages. And next one is two pages. Again, looking for this text here, cover page for scanning only, is the criteria that we use to determine how to split that. So, again, check this video out. It is, again, a really great post on how to uh, do another type of conditional split. And by taking um, our additional function to that, we've just basically added a little bit more functionality to um, to the script so we can do a little bit more now. Now we can only not only change on a variable invoice number or a variable value of some type but now we can do something that's maybe a little bit more simpler and just say hey I want you to find text and I want you to split. So I hope this video has been informative and until next time thanks for watching.